My name is Nancy Nicholas, and I work for the Missouri Department of Mental Health, the Division of Mental Retardation and Developmental Disabilities. In 1998, the Department of Mental Health was awarded the Library Services Technology Act grant. This grant has afforded us the opportunity to work with librarians throughout the state to improve services for individuals with disabilities. Throughout the years, we've covered many topics with our librarians, but one topic of particular interest is assistive technology. Librarians ask us, what is assistive technology? What types of assistive technology should I have in my library? And where can I find out more about assistive technology? Assistive technology is simply technology that allows individuals the freedom to participate in activities that they may not otherwise have the opportunity to participate in. An individual with mobility impairments is able to use a computer with an adapted keyboard. An individual who has difficulty walking is able to access the community through the use of a wheelchair. In this module, we will feature two speakers who are expert in assistive technology. David Baker with Missouri Assistive Technology Projects is one of them. Missouri Assistive Technology provides programming to increase access to assistive technology for individuals of all ages throughout the state. Katie Bannister is an author of several books, including Aunt Katie's Visit and a Personal Care Attendant Guide. Katie uses assistive technology and adaptive devices on a regular basis. What is assistive technology? Assistive technology is a generic term that uh, refers to the um, many, many devices that are out there that are adapted or rehabilitative types of devices for people with disabilities, both individuals with uh, cognitive disabilities as well as people with physical disabilities. Um, they can range uh, from very simple things that you might adapt, like um, oh, a dowel rod with a little uh, eraser on the end to help somebody maybe turn a page to very complex items. You can you know, buy them at a hardware store and uh, create them yourself, or there are certain manufacturers that make uh, various types of assistive devices. Uh, generally, what an assistive device is going to do is it's going to help an individual to overcome some type of barrier that they may face. Um, uh, so say for instance somebody that uh, has difficulty using a keyboard uh, by using some type of adapted keyboard they're going to be able to access the computer which may not have been something they were able to do before. So it, produ it reduces barriers. Um, another way to look at assistive technology, a simpler way, is that it's a tool. A tool for somebody with a disability to level the playing field for them. Assistive technology makes my life as a woman on wheels a whole lot easier. It helps thousands of people every day. Some people don't realize they use assistive technology. The number one form of assistive technology are glasses. Glasses help us. Some people have eyes with disabilities and, you know, think sometimes people take it for granted that, you know, excess um, assistive technology is some big great thing, but it's, sometimes it's just as simple as a little extra help. To help people with developmental disabilities, I think they need to have as many resources and access to as many resources as they can to make them feel like full productive citizens. Um, I have a variety of braces that I'd like to share with you that allow me to live independently and, and do the things that everybody else does, and I think it would apply to people with developmental disabilities too. For example, this is my writer pencil. Um, what's really neat is my therapist put this on in rehab and it took me 20 minutes to write a letter to my parents that said, Mom and Dad, I love you both. But that word practice, I practiced and practiced and I got stronger and now I write exactly as I did before my accident. It just takes a little time to relearn things. Also, I had a friend put um, a tubing on the end of this writer pencil with an eraser head and this is how I turn the pages of a book and also how I type on my computer. And you can get these in the Salmon's catalog just on the internet. And by the way, the internet is assistive technology too. What types of assistive technology are available? 
There's quite a few different types of assistive technology available. Um, they range from durable medical equipment like wheelchairs and walkers to uh, adaptations for folks that are visually impaired, um, things for folks that are hearing impaired. Um, but in a library situation, most of the adaptations would, would pertain to the computer. There are two ways that we interact with the computer. We, we put information into it, we do input, or we get information out, output. And for a lot of folks with disabilities, um, say an individual with a physical disability, uh, the types of adaptations that would be beneficial are things like an adapted keyboard, maybe an oversized keyboard for somebody that doesn't have fine motor skills, or um, a half keyboard for somebody that only does one-handed typing. Uh, the, the mouse is a, is a trouble spot for a lot of folks as well. And um, there are oversized mice um, that um, are useful um, in some instances. Trackballs are an alternative, joysticks. Uh, some individuals are incapable of using either the, um, the mouse or the keyboard and in a situation like that they might use voice input as a way to access the computer. On the other side of the coin when we're talking about output um, you can ways that uh, that can be ad adapted include uh, screen, ma screen magnification which uh, enlarges the, the text and uh, then there's screen reading software which would read the text back to an individual. Um, either an individual who's blind or screen reading software is also very useful for folks that, are, that have learning disabilities. And where can I find this technology? One of the best sources in Missouri to learn about assistive technology is Missouri Assistive Technology. Missouri Assistive Technology uh, is what is known as a Tech Act project. And the types of things that Missouri Assistive Technology does includes uh, programs. We have a number of programs that help people obtain assistive technology. Um, and uh, then uh, we um, also have several funding sources. And we also act as information and referral. So we can help people understand what might be useful, uh, what resources um, they may also access besides us. So I would start by calling Missouri Assistive Technology. The Fred Sammons catalog is where I buy a lot of my stuff, and that's S-A-M-M-O-N-S. -M -M I just looked up on the internet before we did this program, and I found out my writer pencil is still about 30 bucks. That's really easy, and it's very affordable. You could keep one of these writer pencils behind the librarian's desk to share with people. I've also got two other braces I'd like to share with you. This is my eating brace. Now, I'll show you. It has the three straps just like on the writer pencil, wraps around. And in the bottom is like where I stick my fork, like that. But in this bottom, instead of the fork, we could put a pencil. So if we stick a pencil up here, and you've got the eraser head, the eraser head can turn pages of a book. And these average about, mm, I think they're 40, 60, 40 or $50, the writer pencil or the eating brace. And that's a Fred Salmon's catalog, too. Sometimes it's just simple things that can help people. Also, what's better about this brace is it's more adjustable to um, people's different sizes. I know that mine is in a um, medium. I know that they make a large, and you can keep a couple of these behind your library desk. And it could help anybody with a disability, physical or developmental, be able to learn how to turn pages on their own. Now, this other brace is a little more high tech and it's made for an individual hand. It's, the other braces are, can be purchased and used just about by anybody. This is another brace called, that a lot of my fellow that a lot of my fellow quadriplegics use. And it wraps around just like the other ones. Okay. That strap wraps up there. And then my two fingers get wrapped around with the top one. So this brace allows me to hang my hand down, my hand opens up, it brings me up, and it closes my fingers. So I'm able to pick up things and hold them in my hand if need, to, need be. Um, these are more expensive. This is going to cost more. The other, other two things I showed you are work just as well, if not better, and they're easy to use. I think the ability um, to have access to all the books is number one priority. And if a person can't physically pick out a book on their own, um, I think being able to make it friendly and open and have a librarian maybe have a sign with maybe a wheelchair or an other accessible symbol on it that says, please ask for assistance. Make yourself welcoming to people with developmental disabilities and physical disabilities. Be willing to assist those who need it.
patrons with disabilities um, that want to use the computers, I use what's called sticky keys and it's a setting that you can send in, you can set up in your system and what that means is because some people can hold they have to hit, hit like the control key and hit another key to make something else happen sticky keys holds that control key while someone can press another letter and make it a capital letter it's because some of us don't have fingers that work so that's really helpful in the computer in the computer needs um, I think readers my friends with who, who have visual impairments they need big screens. I know there is a product called Web Eyes that can make things on the screen bigger, and that could be researched as well. And I think it'd be really cool if you could have screens that would talk for people with visual impairments. I know it might be kind of hard in the library to find a place for that, maybe a separate room with a computer in it so that somebody with um, a visual impairment could still enjoy the computer by hearing it. What do I need to know to assist a library patron with disabilities? The first thing is to relax. People with disabilities are more similar than they are different from you and I. Consider how you would like to be spoken to and how you would be like, like to be treated. That's the same thing that people with disabilities would appreciate. If you're unsure how to assist an individual with a disability, simply ask. Most people are more than willing to provide you with guidance that may be useful. When assisting people with disabilities, two things. Don't rush right up to them and try to fix everything and make it all better. Go up to them and say, hi, I'd like to help you if you'd like assistance. I'm not sure how to help you, but if you tell me, I will. And you're going to go, wow, thanks, that's really nice, I appreciate that. Yeah, can you take me over here? And, or you might get, leave me alone, I can do it myself. And there are people like that out there. And then sometimes you just have to let people go. But I say being a warm and welcoming open person and not fearful was what really matters. And in fact, I wrote a children's book, Aunt Katie's Visit, in which in the book I tell people the nicest thing you can say to a person with a disability is hello. We're used to being ignored. I'm in the grocery store and mommy and, and, and the little girl's with her mom and, and I come in the grocery store and mom goes, look at the girl in the wheelchair. And what's mom do? Shh, don't look. Well, I look at the child and go, well, I was in a car accident, I broke my neck, my legs don't work, and I use this electric wheelchair. The child's like, okay, that's cool. And mom's like, oh my God, she talks. I do talk, and I do want access to the library. And it doesn't, it's not rocket science, it just takes somebody who's compassionate and open and willing to help. Is assistive technology easy to use? Yes, there is training. One of the best sources of training is online. Some of the manufacturers have websites, or if you do a search, you can come up with uh, tutorials that various people have done and put online. I, I became trained in to use assistive technology after I was in an SUV that rolled over. I was in the hospital for six months, and there I met my physical therapist who really helped me like my body, but my occupational therapist gave me my aids to daily living, the ability to eat, the ability to write, and the ability to put on my own lipstick, and that did wonders. So sometimes you're just kind of thrown into a situation and you have to learn how to creatively solve it. And don't be intimidated by people with disabilities and don't be intimidated by assistive technology. It's not scary, it's really, it's enhancing and it makes everybody more productive. What if an individual needed assistance getting the same equipment in their home, the adaptive equipment in their home for internet access, is there funding available for them? There is. There's another program through Missouri Assistive Technology that's called the Telecommunications Access for Internet. Through that program, if an individual has a computer and they have internet access at home and they meet the financial criteria, which is a household income of less than $60,000, they will be eligible to have adapted technology provided for them for free. And the program even goes so far as to send out a consumer support person to help them identify what's most appropriate. Missouri's fortunate because it's the only state in the United States that has that particular type of program. Grants and funding for people with disabilities and using assistive technology I know are out there. I went through my vocational rehabilitation counselor and if I wanted to go to school or if I wanted to go to work, they were there to help. I think they might be a neat resource to check out. 
um, if not anything but for information. I know that there are some agencies out there like in St. Louis we have one called Adaptability and they go into places and help make things more accessible. After I got my computer through Vogue Rehab, Adaptability came in and trained me on how to use it. I'd also work with the Centers for Independent Living in your local area. Sometimes they can be really helpful too to find funding and, and to find creative ways sometimes to pay for things. David, I want to thank you for sharing some information with us today on assistive technology. It was my pleasure. I hope people will keep in mind that assistive technology is not as difficult as a lot of times they make it out to be and that it has a, a significant impact in helping people with disabilities obtain and do things that they might not otherwise be able to do. If people have additional questions, certainly encourage them to call Missouri Assistive Technology. I'd say librarians, in the end, we're all one. Don't be intimidated if somebody walks differently or rolls. Also, sometimes what can be intimidating is people with speech impediments. And boy, if you can't communicate in this society, it's, it's tough. I have a friend who has a developmental disability so bad, he tries to talk and he like tries to go and make reservations at hotels and, and go to places and people hang up on him. People with disabilities are used to being dissed a lot. In a library, there's no reason they should be. If you don't understand somebody and what they need, ask them to repeat it slowly slow as they can do it. So maybe you could take your time and really listen hard to understand. And nine times out of 10, somebody will be with somebody with a disability, usually a caretaker or a family member to help them get the places they get want to. It's okay to talk to that family member maybe to help them, to help you understand what their son or daughter is saying, but don't just deal with just the parent or the caregiver. Make sure you look in the eyes of the person with a disability with whom you're communicating. It can be intimidating when we don't understand things. I know that a lot of people with hearing impairments, they carry pencils and paper with them all the time to write things down because sometimes they can read lips and sometimes they can't because sometimes people talk fast, some people talk differently. So they've had to learn to make adjustments. There are four types of disabilities, physical, sensory, cognitive, psychiatric. Physical disabilities affect the movement. My wheelchair, I use my wheelchair. Some people use canes and walkers. Sensory, people with hearing and sight impairments. And you know, most people with sensory disabilities can see and sometimes hear a little bit too, so don't underestimate anybody. And there's also disabilities with smell. Some people have chemical sensitivity and they can't be around perfumes or anything that smells has a strong scent. Then there's cognitive. Those are how the brain processes information. Um, those can be uh, learning disabilities, attention deficit, uh, things like that, dyslexia. And then probably I think one of the hardest is psychiatric. Those are disabilities that deal with the psyche and emotions. And I know someone who's so paralyzed by her own fear, she doesn't go out of her house. She's more paralyzed than I am as a quadriplegic. I mean, these dis and the one thing also about sensory, cognitive, and emotional psychiatric disabilities, you can't see them like you can see my wheelchair. So if somebody's misbehaving, you think, is acting poorly, maybe they have a psychiatric disability and, you know, maybe you need to talk to them, calm them down. Um, they're probably with somebody, work with whoever they're with. Um, don't be intimidated and don't be scared of people who are different. I mean, in the end, we're really all one. And that's what life is all about. We hope you have enjoyed this training module. If you would like additional information about assistive technology, go to the Missouri Assistive Technology webpage at www.at.mo.gov. Information about assistive technology can also be found at the Missouri Network of Care website, missouri.networkofcare.org. If you're wondering what types of assistive technology you should have in your library, I'd recommend that you talk to your patrons who have a disability. There is an advocacy organization in Missouri called People First. It is an organization made up of individuals with developmental disabilities. If you would like to know if your region has a People First chapter who could provide you with some expertise and advice, contact your local Missouri Department of Mental Health MRDD Regional Center. A listing of these regional centers is on the Missouri Network of Care webpage. Thank you.